There was a moment in the NFL Championship games a couple weeks ago that has really been bothering me. And no, it's not the moment you're thinking of. It's this. The AFC title game has just finished regulation. The Chiefs and Patriots have just combined for 38 points in the fourth quarter. Mahomes and Brady are trading blows, Tony Romo is using his crystal ball, and now we're headed to what promises to be a thrilling overtime. Then there's a coin flip. The Patriots win, and five minutes of game time later, before the Chiefs offense can see the ball again, the game is over. The game-winning New England touchdown is the sixth straight score between the two teams, and the fifth straight touchdown in possessions not limited by time. So how important was that coin flip? And why can't the NFL seem to make overtime fair? As it turns out, the answer is complicated. Overtime in football has always been a challenge. Injuries happen frequently, especially when players are tired, so any good overtime format needs to be short. At the same time, football possessions can take a long time, so any good overtime format needs to be long enough to provide each team a fair shot. This is a constant tension that will always be at play in any overtime format used in football. Just to quickly recap the history of NFL overtime rules. Originally, the first score in overtime, no matter what kind it was, ended the game. That meant that if the team who won the coin toss elected to receive the ball first, as they usually did, and scored either a field goal or a touchdown on their first possession, as they often did, the second team would never see the ball. Then in 2012, after decades of boring overtimes where teams shuffled down the field to kick a field goal, the NFL added an additional rule. The first team could still win on their first possession, but only if they scored a touchdown. If they just scored a field goal, the other team got a shot to win or retie. This was an obvious improvement, but even so, the overtime system remains a much discussed topic. All kinds of alternatives have been suggested, from messing with starting field position to using some sort of auction system, but as far as I can tell, the most common suggestions tend to boil down to some variation of the college overtime format, wherein both teams get one possession starting on a short field. If it's still tied after that, the process repeats. Nice, simple, fair, right? Obviously, this is better. Except maybe we should look at the stats first. In the old version of the NFL's overtime, the team who got the ball first won 60% of the time, which is a long ways away from the platonic ideal of a 50-50 split. Since the 2012 change, the first team's advantage has dropped to 53%, which is a lot better. In college, the results skew in favor of the team that goes second, 55 to 45, which is worse than the result the NFL's current system produces. I find this very strange. How is it even possible that an overtime system that does not guarantee both teams a chance to score produces fairer results than a system that does? I understand that going second in college overtime provides a knowledge advantage in that you know exactly what you need to do to win or tie, but even so, it's a very counterintuitive result. Still, the numbers don't lie. So why can't the NFL make overtime fair? Maybe it's because it's impossible to do better than what they currently have. The current rules produce imperfect results, but they're still reasonably balanced given the alternatives and get the game over quickly, which is important to avoid injuries. Maybe the NFL's overtime is just fine as it is. Except we haven't talked about the playoffs yet. So far, eight playoff games have been played under the NFL's current overtime rules. Of those eight games, seven, or over 87%, have been won by the team who won the overtime coin toss. The only exception is the Rams' win, win, over the Saints a couple of weeks ago. And five of those eight overtime games ended on the first possession. So, the system that is producing reasonable results in the regular season has done no such thing in the postseason. Now, this is probably some combination of pure chance, eight games is, after all, a ridiculously small sample size, combined with the fact that playoff teams in recent years seem to generally have better offenses than defenses. But the reason doesn't really matter. Any time an important game, such as Super Bowl 51 or the recent AFC title game, ends with a single possession overtime, that is bad for the NFL. Whether or not the math says that it's mostly fair overall, it sure feels unfair in the moment, which is far more important to a fan's experience of the game. Leaving Patrick Mahomes or Matt Ryan stuck watching helplessly from the sideline just isn't fun to watch and is always going to provoke outrage, fair or not, justified or not. The NFL does not need more controversy than it already has, so if there was a format that guaranteed both teams' offense and defense a say in the outcome of overtime, while minimizing the effect of the coin flip more than the college system does, that would be an improvement. And there is one format that I think does the job. It's a simple change. 
leave the regular season overtime rules as they are, but for the playoffs, take the 2012 rule change a step further and simply guarantee both teams a possession, letting each possession start naturally with a kickoff, punt, or turnover, whatever comes out of the normal course of the game. If the game is still tied after two possessions, the next score by either team wins. Here's why this would be an improvement. The current NFL rules are unbalanced because the team who goes first has a possession advantage. The college rules are unbalanced because the team who goes second has a knowledge advantage. This system is a balance between the two because both advantages are at play at the same time. If you go second, you'll know what you need to do on your first possession to win or tie. You'll know if you should go for it on fourth down, you'll be able to make a better decision on whether to go for two after a touchdown, and so on. If you go first and survive the other team's first possession, now you have an even larger advantage because you have the first chance to score unanswered. If you game out every score combination this system might produce and use this year's NFL scoring averages to determine the probability of each, the result gets pretty darn close to 50-50. Think of the drama this would create. If it's no longer clear whether going first or second in overtime is better, the winner of the coin toss now has quite a decision on their hands. Do you take the early advantage that going second provides, or do you take the later advantage that going first provides? The right choice might vary depending on the weather, the opponent, and the momentum of the game. And whatever happens, the choice a coach makes will be discussed for a long time. On top of that, both offenses are guaranteed at least one say in the matter. Just imagine if that Patriots-Chiefs game had been played with these rules. Given the chance, I think the Chiefs would likely have scored a touchdown and retied the game. At that point, it would have been in Kansas City's best interest, mathematically speaking, to go for two. They were exactly 50% for two-point conversions on the season. Now, that's the kind of toss-up I'd want to watch. Also, let's just make every play challengeable, okay?